Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. Where I left you off, we were taking a look at how we could actually copy from this item pointer i into this weapon here on this equals operator, so as that we can end up updating appropriately its damage, damage type, and range. So, what you might think is that, okay, we can do something such as this, and then the question then is, how do we get from an i, which is an item pointer, to a weapon pointer? And we had discussed a few things that basically would allow us to try casting it as a weapon pointer using traditional C casting. And to check that it happens to actually be a weapon or something that is derived off of weapon. So the problem with that is that, and we went into this in the previous one, that that really wasn't a polymorphic way of going about this. And C++ provides us a polymorphic way of doing this. And that is using the dynamic cast operator. So the way that dynamic cast works is that you can see here, this is what it is, dynamic underscore cast. Then, similar to how we ended up using templating, you use the less than and greater than signs, and within there, whatever type you want to go to, similar to with the templating, we ended up putting whatever type a specific template was. So in case we wanted to have a linked list of integers, we would put int in here. In this case here, because we want to become a weapon pointer, we put in weapon and then the star to say that it's a pointer to a weapon. And then we use parentheses, and within there, we have whatever we want to cast into a weapon pointer. So that is what you can end up doing to actually do this. Now there's a few important things to note. There are two different types of casting, dynamic casting and static casting. And there's a few important differences between the two. And the first thing is that dynamic casting happens at runtime. It doesn't happen at compile time. That's the major difference between a static cast and a dynamic cast. A dynamic cast checks for specific things to see. And do you remember how we went over the V tables previously? It uses information such as that. It uses some type information that we'll get into in either the next episode or the episode after that, or maybe a few episodes even further down the line, in order to basically determine whether one class is derived from another class. And the most important thing about dynamic casting is that it can only be done in classes that have something that is virtual. Or more accurately, it'll only allow us to cast from something such as item here that is virtual into any of its base classes. Or alternatively, all that matters is that your source class is virtual, so that it actually has the information that it can need in terms of vtables and the like in order to traverse it and find whether or not it's related to in this case here, we were doing weapon and item. But I could even do things such as in case this were a weapon pointer. And let's just that. And then over here, I want to convert to an armor pointer. It could even do that transverse in which it's effectively heading up to a parent, then down to a different child. And that's a bit more of a rare cast. And it's known, I believe, in general as cross-casting where you're going from one sibling to another sibling. And otherwise, in general, though, we're either going to be doing what's upcasting or downcasting. And the difference between upcasting and downcasting is that, think about like a family tree. Usually you have your ancestors higher up in the tree. So you upcast in case you want to go to a parent, such as in case I want to convert a weapon to an item. In case I want to go from an item to a weapon, then I would have to end up going with a downcast. And none of this is particularly important, but in case you ever encounter somebody using those terms, I want you to understand what they mean. So what then happens in here is that this can only go from something such as, in this case here, item which has something that's virtual, into weapon, regardless of whether or not weapon happens to be an abstract class or virtual class, or whether it happens to be a class that happens to be concrete. So basically whether or not it has any virtual methods within it, doesn't matter for dynamic casting for your target. So whatever you're converting into doesn't matter whether or not it's virtual. All that matters is that whatever type you're converting from is virtual. So I must be virtual. What's over here doesn't need to be. In this case, they both are virtual, which just helps avoid a lot of potential confusion. But that's in part what static cast is for. In case I want to convert from something that is not a virtual type into some other type that presumably is related to it, then it's a matter of I'm going to want to end up using a static cast because 
This will end up giving us errors in case we try to convert from a non-virtual type. So then what we would do in here, and this is going to, this operator here, in which it has this entire segment of it, is going to return a weapon pointer. So what I need to do here is I need to create some weapon pointer, weapon pointer, and we call it W for now. And we want in here W to be equal to this, as well as we want to check that W is not equal to a null pointer. Technically, if we just left off this not equals null pointer, it would be fairly accurate and fairly reasonable. But it's a matter of we want to go, okay, we're going to convert this thing to this. And now the problem is that because this is a pointer, I have to do arrows as opposed to dots. But that's really all that it requires to actually do what we were looking to do in the previous episode and to do it in the correct manner. And while some people might say that in general you shouldn't be dealing with stuff like this, there are a lot weirder and worse things you could be doing, and this in general is the best way to do this sort of thing in which we do this copying of from an item pointer into our weapon. So alternatively, let's say that I want to do static cast. Static cast is the exact same. All it is is it's static underscore cast. It won't work in this case because of the fact that item happens to be a virtual, well, it has virtual functions within it. It isn't a purely virtual class. It isn't an abstract class, but it still will end up failing for that. So we use dynamic cast. And the important thing to note when it deals with pointers is that if it encounters an error in making this cast, it will return a null pointer. I could also, rather than converting into a weapon, and this is a bit more of an advanced subject that really you're not going to see or use in general applications, and it only really is useful in very low-level applications. But it is important, and you might run into it, so I'm going to tell you about it now. And that's that you can dynamic cast into a void pointer. And I know we haven't gone over void pointers much. I think I mentioned them once or twice so far in this series. But a void pointer is basically just a pointer that doesn't have a type. It's a reference to some spawn memory, but basically is a pure reference to that memory address. It doesn't actually have anything that's important about type, so it doesn't tell you how much memory there is actually being used by that object. It doesn't tell you anything else about it. But there are some types in certain low-level applications where you will actually want to cast something to a void pointer to figure out where your item i starts in memory, where its very beginning is for that particular instance of i, well, particular instance of item. As a result, you may see this void pointer dynamic casting that you see here. However, in general, that's something that you're going to want to avoid. So pretty much in general, you never want to dynamic cast to a void pointer unless you absolutely have to. And when you have to, you probably will know that you have to. So just something to be aware of, to keep an eye out for, and to know that that exists. One other potential problem with dynamic casting. You remember how earlier I ended up discussing how these end up being constructed and destructed. And this is a problem both with dynamic casting as well as also with, frankly, our virtual functions. So things such as our operator equals here. And that's that if in a constructor or a destructor, you use dynamic cast or a virtual operator, it can have potentially incorrect behavior. And that's because of this. In case you remember how these are constructed, item ends up being constructed first, then weapon gets constructed, and let's say that this happens to be some child type of weapon. Let's say that this happens to be something such as along the lines of a melee weapon. And if for whatever reason I wanted to get the melee weapon's name in here, so in case for whatever reason in here I ended up calling get name, it's important to understand that this call into get name is going to call weapons version. It's not going to call whatever child class's version because that child has not yet been created. So it's a matter of right now this one here is going to go into here. It's going to return weapon. It might be a melee weapon, but this function here, because melee weapon hasn't yet been created as part of this order of constructors, isn't going to know about it. And the same thing is true for dynamic casting. If I tried to dynamic cast, let's say one of these items in, well, let's even say that I tried to end up dynamic casting for whatever reason this into something else. 
there's a reasonable chance that that might not necessarily succeed, as well as then in case I tried to do something similar in a destructor, which I haven't yet created because that's something I want to go over in terms of how that's done with inheritance in a little bit on its own. However, I would then run into that same potential problem. So that's something to be aware of. So you want to avoid dynamic cast, static cast, and virtual functions, well, in particular, dynamic cast and virtual functions, within constructors and destructors. If you have to use them, okay, but once again, something to avoid. And finally, there's another important thing to understand about dynamic casting and static casting, and that's that they don't only work on pointers. They also work on references. So if I have this is a reference here and this is a reference here, and I could say dereference this guy here, so as I actually, or whoops, dereference I there, so as I get its actual one and theirs down here would be fixed by converting this to a dot. But the problem with that is that, as you might guess from the difference between the arrows and the dots, as well as somewhat how we've seen this handled in the past, this, while it behaves sort of similarly to a pointer, is not a pointer. Because one of the things that I mentioned up here is that we're guaranteed that this weapon is not null. And that's that basically a reference cannot be null, cannot point to a null pointer. As a result, it can't return an error in the same manner that pointers do, in which they're returning null pointer. It needs its own special mechanism for letting you know that something went wrong with that cast. And I'm going to get into that in the next episode. So I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.